Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. Today we're going to look at section 3.6, which deals with percents, fractions, and decimals, and converting from one form to another. Before we start, I want to define what a percent is. A percent is just saying parts per 100. And if we actually break the word down, we have the word per and cents in there. And if we think about it, per means to divide, and cents means 100. Uh, we can think of it as how many cents are in a dollar. How many pennies are in a dollar? Well, that would be 100. So cents is actually Latin for 100. So it means per 100. So per cent is per 100, or which also means divide by 100. So if we see this, this is saying 50%. It's saying 50 is being divided by 100. If we want to convert that to a decimal and then maybe convert that to a fraction, we can simply do that by saying, well, if this is being divided by 100 because it's per cent, that's what this symbol tells me, I can essentially just uh, divide it by 100, 50 divided by 100. So if I do that, 50 divided by 100, this is just a fraction that I can reduce, or maybe I want to do that division. If I did this division, I would get 0.5. Now, this is a long and drawn out way to actually do this in long division. And we've already discussed in previous sections about dividing or multiplying by factors of 10. 100 is two factors of 10. We can just move a decimal point. So if we take this number and imagine a decimal point here, we can just move it two spots to the left. When we divide by a factor of 10, we move the decimal to the left. Well, this is two zeros, so I'd move it to the left two spots. So I'd get 0.50, moving it one two spots. Well, that's the same as 0.5. Now, if we want to take that even further and maybe go to a fraction, well, this is the same as 5 tenths. And we would see that if we reduce this. If I just cover up those two zeros, those two factors of tens, it's 5 tenths. So here it's already a fraction. Here it's a decimal. Now we're going back to a fraction. If I reduce this, 1 half. So essentially, once I did this point here, this process here, if I were just simply reduce the fraction, I would get 1 half. Or if I actually do the division, I would get my decimal. So to convert a percent to either a fraction or a de decimal, we're going to divide by 100. Let's look at some examples. We want to convert these given percents to decimals. To do that, we essentially just divide by 100, because that's what percent is telling us to do. So 5 divided by 100. Well, to divide by 100, I'm just going to move the decimal point two spots. So I will put it in here, and then I'm going to go 1, 2, and then I would need a placeholder. So this would be 0.05 or 5 one hundredths, 5 over 100, 5 one hundredths. So now it's a decimal. Divide by 100, move the decimal two spots to the left. Let's take a look at this example here, 32%. Well, to divide by 100, I just have to move the decimal to the left two spots. And if I do that, the decimal would be moved in front of the 3, 1, 2. It's now in front of the 3. So I just rewrite it, 0.32. The number, the decimal equivalent of 32% is 32 hundredths, 0.32. 16.8, if we do this one, we move the decimal two spots to the left, which puts it in front of the 1. So I'd have 168, 0.168. Pretty simple once you do enough of them. And that's what math is all about, doing repetition. Now this one here, it's already a decimal, but it's also a percent, so it's saying, this 0.15 is divided by 100. We do the exact same thing. Let's divide this by 100. We move the decimal two spots to the left, which is going to bring us in front of this 0 and then in front of another 0. We have to put one in there. So we'd have the decimal here. I'm going to rewrite it. The decimal, and then 1 0, 2 zeros, and then 1 and 5. So 0.15% is 0.0015, or 15 ten thousandths. Now, what if we have, like this one had a decimal and a percent. This one has a fraction and a percent. Well, the first thing we want to do, like we discussed in a previous section, is to convert 
fractions to decimals here. So I could do this division, and I would get 0.2. And if we think about it, what if I doubled that denominator? Times that by 2, I times that by 2, I'd get 2 tenths. Well, I can rewrite that as 18 and 2 tenths, which is 18.2. So if this is equivalent to 18.2% just by converting this fraction to a decimal, do that division, and I'd get 0.2. Now I can move the decimal two spots to the left to remove my percent sign. And when I do that, I get 0.182. One, two spots, 0.182. All right, let's look at what if we have a decimal number and we want to convert it to a percent? Well, we're going the other way. So instead of dividing by 100, we're going to want to multiply one by 100. What if something were to increase by 56 times? What percent increase is that? Well, to convert a number or a decimal into a percent, we're going to multiply by 100. Well, multiplying by 100, we add two zeros or we move the decimal two spots to the right. So 56 to write as a percent would be 56 times 100. Two zeros I would add to there, or essentially move the decimal two spots to the right. One, two, and we have 5,600. But because we're going to a percent, we have to denote that just like a unit. This would be 5,600% or 5,600%. If we want to convert this number to a percent, we're going to multiply by 100. And we're going to just move the decimal two spots to the right, 1, 2, which would give me 45. But because I'm going to a percent, I denote percent. If I take 45 and divide it by 100 per cent per 100, I would get this number back. So these are equivalent. If I have 5.6, I want to convert that to a percent. I move the decimal two spots to the right because I'm multiplying by 100. One spot, two spots, I have to have a 0. And now the decimal's here, two spots from where it was. 560, and we denote percent because we convert it to a percent. What about 1? If I have 1 of something, I have that whole something. And we've discussed how percents and fractions represent parts of the whole. Well, this is one whole whatever we're talking about. If I want to convert this to a percent, I multiply it by 100 or move the decimal two spots. And when I do that, well, 1 times 100 is 100. But it is a percent. 100% is equi equivalent to a whole value. 1 is a, the first whole number. 100% is the whole value. What if we have a decimal of 0 0.05? Well, no different than when we had a decimal here or here. We multiply it by 100. We're going to move that decimal one, two spots. So now it's right after the 5. I'd have 5 point nothing, which is just 5. Because we took a number to a percent, we denote this is now a percent. 5 per 100, or 5%. 5, 5 divided by 100 is 0 0.05, 5 one hundredths. All right, what if we're given a percent and we want to go to a fraction? Well, the easiest way I feel is to actually write it as a fraction right from the start. 5% says 5 divided by 100. Well, I can write 5 divided by 100 just like that. And we see, well, 5 one hundredths, I can just reduce that. Or I could actually, uh, yeah, I just want to reduce it. I know 5 and 100 have a common factor of 5. They're both divisible by 5. So if I divide this by 5, I get 1. I divide that by 5, I get 20. So 1 20th is the same thing as 5%. So if I took 1 20th of an object, I would have 5% of that object. What about 32%? Well, percent tells us to divide by 100. And now I can just reduce that. Well, 32 and 100 are both divisible by 4. So if I divide that by 4, I get 8. If I divide that by 4, I get 25. 8 25ths doesn't reduce any further. This is the fraction. So divide by 100 and reduce. Well, if I do that to this one, I still have a decimal with 16.8%, 16.8 per 100. 
I have to move this decimal. And if I move that decimal, what I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator because I don't want to change its value. So let's do that. And by moving the decimal 1, I have to add a 0 there. Now we can reduce it. Well, if we look at this number, I identify that, well, maybe it's divisible by uh, something other than 2, because they are even. I'm going to say 4. This is divisible by 4. So if I reduce it, 4 goes into 16 4 times and 8 twice. And 4 goes into this 250 times. Oh, I see. I still have a common factor. I could have reduced this by 8. They are both divisible by 8. So if I look at this, I could say, OK, I can uh, divide another 2 out, which would give me 21. And if I divide this by 2, I'm going to get 170. Oh, no. 125. And that doesn't reduce any further. If we look at these two numbers, this is only has factors of 5, and this has factors of 3 and 7. Nothing common. So we reduced it. All right. What about 0.15%? Well, we're going to do the same thing. Percent just means divide by 100. So I'm going to divide 0.15 by 100. And just like the last one, I've got to get rid of that decimal. So I move this over 2 to make it 15. And I have to add two zeros to this. Because what I do to the top, I want to do to the bottom. And now I can reduce this. I say both of these are divisible by 5. So 5 goes into this 3 times, and 5 goes into this. Well, 5 goes into 10 twice with three zeros. And we see we have three two thousandths. No common factors. It is simplified. All right, 18 and 1 fifth percent. Well, here, we still want to convert this to a decimal. So I'm going to have 18, and if you recall, 1 fifth is the same as 2 tenths, 0.2, 2 tenths. Divide it by 100. That's what our percent tells us to do. And now I have to get rid of this decimal and add a 0. What I do to the top, I do to the bottom. And now we can reduce. So I'm going to reduce this, uh, let's just say 2, because that's the first factor that I identify that they have in common. So that's going to give me 91 and 500. All right, well, <clears throat> I think that's as far as we can reduce it, 91 500. No more common factors. All right, what if we're given a fraction and asked to determine what percent? Because again, we know percents indicate parts of the whole, and fractions indicate parts of the whole. So we should be able to convert in between them. Well, to convert a fraction to a percent, you just simply multiply by 100 and simplify. Do the division if necessary. So I'm going to multiply this by 100 to make it a percent. Well, I know that 100 is divisible by 10. And 10 uh, would be a factor left over. 10 goes into 100 10 times. And now I have 3 times 10 over 1 is just 3 times 10, which is 30. Not too bad, right? 30 what? 30% because now we're converting to a percent. We're saying this value needs to be divided by a 100 to get back to that. What about 73 one hundredths? Well, this is already 73 per 100. If I can see that and identify it, I can write this as 73%. But the rule of thumb is to basically do this math. To turn it into percent is we have to make it of 100 parts. Well, here, 100 cancels 100, and we have 73. But now it's a percent. To get back to this, we would have to divide by 100. And that's what our percent symbol tells us to do. Well, what if we have 1 half? Same thing. Multiply it by 100, and then do any simplification if necessary. Well, I know 100 is divisible by 2. 2 goes into 100 50 times. 50 times 1 is 50. And now it's a percent, 50%. If I divide 50 by 100, I will get 1 half, what we originally started with. 22 25ths. Let's do the same thing here. 
times 100. So if we do this, we can simplify it. 25 goes into 100 four times. And now it's over 1, so we don't have to worry about it. And now we just multiply. 22 times 4 is going to give me 88%. If I divide 88 over 100 and reduce, I would get 22 25ths. What about 5 6 Well, if I multiply this by 100, because I want to make it a percent, I know that 6 doesn't go into 100. So I'm going to have to maybe simplify. I can say that 6 is the same as 2 times 3, 2 times 3. And I know that that 2 goes into 100. We saw it back here, right? 2 goes into 150. So we just do a little bit of simplifying so it makes our math a little easier. 5 times 50 is 250, but it's still over 3. Now, we can't have a fraction and a percent. We actually have to do this division. If I do this division, let's do it right here, long division. 3 goes, doesn't go into 2, but 3 goes into 25. 8 times, which would be 24. And we find that difference to be 1. I bring down a 0. 3 goes into 10 3 times, which would be 9. I find that difference to be 1. And now I have to introduce a 0. And I bring it down. 3 goes into 10 three times again. And remember, when you introduce the decimal, it's fixed. That's where it stays. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. If I find that difference, I get 1. If I bring down another 0, hopefully at this point we see, hey, this decimal is going to repeat. I'm going to indicate that that's going to repeat. But it is now a percent because we multiplied it by 100. We made it per 100. So this fraction times 100. We reduced a little bit to get this and then did the final division. And we found out 83.3%. Well, hopefully, maybe we want to mix it up. We recall that percents are uh, decimals that repeat can be written as fractions. Maybe I say that this is 83 and 1 third percent. We could do that as well. Maybe essentially write this as a mixed number. 3 goes into 25 83 times with a remainder of 1. 1 remains over the 3. So your answer is acceptable this way, and it's acceptable that way, because it's still written as a percent. Percents can contain decimals and fractions, decimals or fractions, not both. But we, uh, fractions can't contain decimals. So hopefully that makes sense to you. The only way you're going to be successful and to really feel comfortable with it is to practice on your own. Keep practicing. Do your homework. Good luck, and thank you for watching.